Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Can Place Flowers. This is part of Leak Code 75, a playlist we've been doing. So I'm going to have that playlist linked down below, as well as Blind 75 and Top Interview 150. These are sort of the three main playlists if you are interview prepping. So, what is this question? You have a long flower bed in which some of the plots are planted and some are not. However, flowers cannot be planted in adjacent plots. Given an integer array flower bed containing zeros and ones, where zero means empty and one means not empty, and an integer n, return true if n new flowers can be planted in the flower bed without violating the no adjacent flower rule and false otherwise. So example one, we have one zero zero one, and we want to see if we can plant one new flower. So we want to look for a zero, a place that doesn't already have a plant. And we want to look if that zero has a zero before and after, because we don't want any adjacent flowers. We find that right over here, this is a zero, we can plant it over here, and there's no flower to the left or right of it. So we're going to output true, we can plant one new flower. And example two, can we plant two new flowers? So again, we want to find an empty slot and we find that in these three over here. But for these empty slots, both the left and right should also be empty and there's only one index where we can do that. So we can only put in one flower and we can't put in two, so we output false. So this question is actually pretty straightforward once we understand exactly what we want to look for. So like always starting off with examples, say we have the following example here. This is our input flower bed and n equals one. We want to go through our entire input array and look for empty slots where we can put our flowers. Once we find a zero, we want to make sure there's also nothing adjacent to us. So both the left and right of that index should also be zero. If that's the case, we can mark that index as zero. So over here, this is zero, but to the right of it is a one. Over here, this is already taken. This is a one. Here, left is a one. But over here, the left and right are both zeros. So we want to mark this, claiming this as a position for our flower. Because say n was two, and we had some extra indices in our flower bed. Once we got to this number, if we hadn't marked it, this would have shown up as empty being zero. And we could have theoretically also said, hey, we can place a flower here. But in reality, since we are already using this index, we can't use this one anymore. And we have to move down to see if there's any other place we can fit another flower. And we see over here, yes, we can. Left is zero. We are zero and there's nothing to the right. So automatically that's going to be zero, which means we can also place a flower here. So we went ahead and placed two new flowers and we would return true. So that's all we really need to do. We just need to loop through our input. So for i in range length of flower bed, I want to see if what is to the left of me is zero, to the right of me is zero, and if I'm on a zero myself. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to define two variables, left and right. So left is going to be true if what's to the left of me is zero. So left is going to equal flower bed of i minus one equaling zero. And right is going to equal flower bed of i plus one equaling zero. Now there is a problem with this. What if we're at this first index or last index? If we're at this first index, there's nothing for us to check for left. If we're already at i equals zero, we're gonna go out of bounds. And if we're already at this last index over here, there's going to be nothing after us in our array. So again, we're gonna go out of bounds. But we know if we are already at this position, since there is no left or right, by default, this is going to be true because there's no flower on those ends preventing us from planting a flower at our own index. So if I'm over here at index zero, I automatically want to set my left to be true. And the way to do that is setting i equaling zero. So what I'm doing over here is checking if my index is zero. If so, it's going to be true. And if that's not the case, then I want to make this check over here. So one or the other has to be true for left to be true. And I'm going to do the same thing for right. So if i equals length of flower bed minus one, or the flower bed to the right of me is zero, this variable is going to be true. Now that we know our left and right, we want to check our own index as well. So if left, if that is true, and right, that is also true, and the value at our own index, so flower bed at i equals zero, if all three of these are true, we're going to mark the index we're on to be one. So flower bed of i equals one. And now we have one less flower to plant in our total new flowers that we were looking to plant. So I'm going to subtract one from n. n minus equals one. And if n does end up equaling zero, we can return right away and we don't need to keep checking in the remaining array. So if n equals zero, we're going to return true. Now, once we go through our entire for loop without ever returning true, which means n never actually hits zero, so we're going to have to return false. So we're going to return false at the very end. 
And in the beginning, what if n started off being zero? So we're just going to add a base case over here. If n equals zero, we don't need to check anything. We can just return true right away. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talking about space and time complexity. For time, we're iterating through our entire input of flower bed. So this is going to be O of n if there are n elements in our input. And for space, we're not actually using any extra space. We're just keeping track of left and right variables for each iteration which we update. So it's going to be constant O of 1. Now before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example just to see how our code is going to play out line by line. So running our code through with this example over here, the first thing we're going to do is check if n equals 0. It doesn't, so we can't return true right away. Now we want to loop through all the indices in our flower bed. So we're going to start off with i being index 0, and we're going to set our left and right variables. For left, i equaling 0 is this true? It is, so we don't even need to go in this or. We're just going to set left to be true. Left is true, and now for right. So for right, we want to make a check. Are we at that very last index? We're not. So since we're not, we want to make this check over here. Is flower bed of i plus 1 equal to 0? It isn't, so right is going to be false. Now we go in this if condition, if left is true and right is true, that's not true, it's already false. So we don't need to check all these other conditions. As soon as we have a failure in any part of an and condition, we can fail right away. So we don't go in this if condition. Going back in our for loop, we want to assign left again. I does not equal zero, we're at index one right now. So we're going to check the index before us to see if that's zero. That is, so left is going to be true. And for right, again, we're not at that last index, so we just want to check the index after us if that is zero. That is true. The index after us is zero, so right is going to be true. And now we go in this if condition. Left is true, right is true, and is the value at our own index equal to zero? That is not true, so we don't go in this if, and we go back in the for loop. Again, we want to assign left and right, so over here we see we're not at index zero. And what is flower bed of i minus one? That's not equal to zero, so left is going to be false. And right is going to be true. The index right after us is equal to zero, so that's going to be true. Going in this if condition, left fails us right away. It's not true. So we go back in this for loop. Again, we're just setting left and right. So the index before us, what's the value there? Is it equal to zero? It is, so that is going to be true. And for right, the index after us, if the value there is zero, that is also true. Now, if left, that's true, and right, that's also true. And the value at our own index equals zero, which is true. We can now say we can plant a flower at this spot. So flower bed of i is going to equal 1. We're going to decrease 1 from our count of n. So instead of 2, we only need to plant one more new flower. And since we're not at 0 yet, we can't return true. So we go back in this for loop. Left over here is going to be false because i of minus 1, this has a value of 1. It's not 0, so it's going to be false. And right, we're at this last index, so we are by default true. And we make a check again. If left, this is not true. So we exit out of here and go back in this for loop. But there are no more indices for us to iterate over. So we're out of this for loop and we return false because n is equal to 1. So we weren't able to plant all the new flowers we wanted. We still have one new flower left. And so that is going to be our output. Oh, we just went ahead and solved can place flowers. If you have any questions with this whatsoever, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.